everybody. It's me, Stacy, here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com, and welcome. Welcome to Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 491, counting down to 500 classes. Who would have ever thought? Oh my gosh, you guys have been with me through long hair, short hair, medium hair, um, skinnier, <laughs> less gray. <laughs> been doing these for a while now and you have you have traveled the journey with me thank you so so much for being part of the scrapbooking made simple family and part of my family now today today is uber fun it really is for those of you who have never been part of a scrapbooking made simple YouTube class well welcome to you this is a full-length technique based class there's no commercials I do not monetize my channel woo -woo. Woot woot. You never know where they're going to put one of those pesky commercials right in the middle of something that's really important. So we don't monetize our channel and we try and show you new ways of using things you may already have in your crafty stash and bringing you products you may have not ever seen before, all while keeping crafting affordable. And today that is a for sure. Oh my gosh. When you see the Marianne toppers and the price holy smokes artichoke even the dyes wow for an international company job well done we will be live chatting during the premiere so if you see a live chat going on over here pop in and say hello say hey we'll say hey back <laughs> there's hundreds of us online and we would love to make a new friend you would be you would be, I guess, pleasantly surprised to find how many people have made such solid friendships just through the live chats and then they, they communicate through Facebook and outside of the live chats. And it's just been wonderful having that opportunity to, to grow and to learn about all of you. You truly have become our family. So today, today it's all about fun and ease and newbie crafters. This is right up your alley because there is nothing intimidating about anything I'm doing today. And if I can do it, you can do it. I promise you. And hopefully you'll find that most of this product is wow priced because we are trying to keep this hobby going and cra keep crafting affordable. Now, I've got a little bit of, I've got Marianne for you. That's Marianne Designs, the new company. I've got some Sizzix for you. I'm, we're gonna be die cutting, we're gonna be stamping, we're gonna be coloring, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing some stuff on black paper. Some of you are gonna say, oh Stacy, that's way too fiddly for me. Okay, I get it. And others of you are gonna be going, oh, oh. <laughs> you just never know until you see it, whether you're going, no, or you're going, oh. It's so funny how one word, it, 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 how you uh, how you say it, how you how you use your voice to to the tone of that word can mean so many different things from from oh to oh to oh. <laughs> You'll have to let me know which one you are after the end of this class. Now I've got winner winner chicken dinner to tell you about. I've got two of them. They're on my blank piece of paper. <laughs> Elena will be back soon and they'll be back to their purple pieces of paper but for now you, you you're a winner winner chicken dinner and you've got $25 to spend how do you get to be a winner winner chicken dinner it's so easy first you have to subscribe to our channel there's a heart somewhere over here a heart with an SMS click subscribe I thank you for that <laughs> then post a comment below if you're commenting during the live chat it doesn't count you have to comment below and the comment can be about anything as long as it's kind we even had a comment this week about uh, a customer was saying about the whole aliexpress thing and and she's like and i know you're not going to post this comment and i yeah actually your opinion counts you absolutely have the right to 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 say what you want to say and and in reality we were in complete and total agreement and i called her and i said Yes, we're going to post your comment. Absolutely, we are. So as long as it's polite and kind, 
we will we will approve your comment you won't see it right away but we will approve it and then you go into the running to be a winner winner chicken dinner and get a $25 gift card like these two lovely ladies have done Ooh, you're gonna have fun with that gift card if you take advantage of some of the stuff today now a lot of this is limited that's because they're international and I can only buy what we can get I mean it has to ship here before uh, it before we do the YouTube that way it doesn't get lost in trans you know tra transit so it's all here yay and that means we're limited to how much product we have but I think I brought in enough of the Marianne to make everybody's heart happy I sure hope so now our winner winners our first winner winner which is from YouTube number 490 is Lori Lori Para hello Lori Para how are you I bet you've waited to hear your name and now you're going she said it really yeah Lori really it's your turn congratulations back up the back up the video hear your name again call in whomever you need to call in your fur babies your spouse your significant other your children your grandchildren so they can all hear me say Lori Para but you're not alone no 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 Lori you are not our second winner winner is Lindsay Lindsay Shaw Hello, Lindsay Shaw. How are you today? You also are a winner, winner chicken dinner and had better be doing the winner, winner chicken dance with me. <laughs> Lindsay, stand up. Lori, stand up. Come on, stand up. I would if I could, but I am my own camera person and so I'm pretty much stationary until the class is done. <laughs> so are you ready? Okay, you're a winner chicken dinner you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo catch you for you congratulations to the both of you I hope you enjoy your $25 find something that makes your heart happy find something that you wouldn't necessarily have purchased for yourself but now that it's free why not <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So today, today it's about Mary Ann Designs. I've got Crafter's Companion. I've got Hunky Dory. I've got Sizzix. I've got a little bit of everything for you. And as always, we're going to start off super simple. And then we're going to get progressively a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And hopefully somewhere in this full length technique based class that's commercial free, you find something that piques your curiosity or reminds you that you can do this or that you do own that. Where did I put it? I know I bought that a while ago. I'm gonna have to go find it. That happens more often than not. So I'm gonna tilt on down. I'm gonna get started for today. I'm gonna show you a few samples. And then a little bit later on, I will be back up to talk to you because the reason I picked this product has everything to do with my parents everything to do with my parents. I saw it and I thought, <laughs> I have to have it. <laughs> All right, so down we go. I'm gonna show you a few samples. We're gonna get started and then I will see you in just a little bit. Hello everybody, thanks for joining me today. It is so good to be here. Down we go, bye. Woo, not very high tech, but that's okay, I get the job done. <laughs> that's the important part. All right, look at how beautiful is this, right? Now that is hunky-dory paper. I'm not gonna show you the hunky-dory paper until the very end. But how pretty is that? And easy peasy. So there's one sample I wanna show you. That's Mary Ann's card toppers. Here's another sample. These are Marianne dies. Now, love this, love this. Isn't that just beautiful? That was just done with white paper and colored with, with, with markers, with ink. Love this. And then we go. Look at how darling is he. Now this is using a card topper. It's using Marianne dies. And it's using Marianne dies and stamps. So you it's a you go from you go from the 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 lovely <laughs> to the elegant to the super fun. A little bit of something for everybody today. I do think so. All right, are we ready to get started? Good. Now, where to start? 
that's a good question. I guess at the very beginning, because that's a very good place to start. I'm going to pull over the card toppers. So Marianne makes these sheets. They're kind of like a magazine page, a thick magazine page. So they've got a, not a high gloss to them, a little bit of a sheen. It's not, it's not a full matte, maybe more like a satin. If we were buying paint, <laughs> And it wouldn't be a high gloss paint, but it wouldn't be a flat paint. It's more maybe like a satin or an eggshell sheen to it. And on it, you get several different beautiful card toppers. These are not pre-die cut out for you. You are going to have to cut them yourself, but they are stunning, stunning. And the price is crazy good. I wanna say it's $1.60 a sheet. And then of course they're on sale. So I brought this one in. Look at how cute. I brought this one in. And we're, you'll see in the samples how they've incorporated these with dies and stamps. And then I also brought him in. So the gnomes, the gnomes are all about, all about my mom and dad. But let's start. I think I'm going to play with this guy first because it was just so pretty. So how do you use these? Let me back it up just a little bit and maybe go down just a little bit. How do you use these? Well, this is for when you need to make something quick and easy. You could have nine cards done very fast or you're new to crafting and you wanna try it out, but you're not sure you wanna to spend too much money, but you wanna give it a whirl, this is a great way to go. These are simple. All you do is cut them out. Now you may use a trimmer, I get that. In fact, I'm gonna go this way first. You may use a trimmer. I'm a freehander. It makes a lot of you nervous, I know. Okay, so there's one, and let's do this one up here. There's two. And, oh, I like this gray one. Well, let's just cut that one out too and we'll see which one I end up using. So I'm just gonna cut this one out. I should have just cut the whole darn thing up, right? And then I can decide. See, no editing in my videos. All right. So I'm gonna take these and trim them down. Now, they do give you guides and you could cut on the guide because they do give you the little, the little box around it, the little black line. Or you can leave a little bit of a border around that black box, which I think is what I'm gonna do for now. So I'm just gonna trim them on down, get them pretty close to even. Again, you would use a trimmer if you're not happy with your freehanding. I tend to not be happy with my trimmer. <laughs> I try, I do, I try with a trimmer. I find that, um, that I do just as good with a freehand. <laughs> okay, so there's one. Well, let's bring the trash can on over and let's see if we, if we do well today. I really like the gray one. I think that's beautiful. You're saying, gosh, they're very small, Stacy, but they don't have to stay this way. You have the opportunity to mat and layer and build on them. And make them fabulous. Honorary SMS girl, Patty played with these. She did all the samples of these and she just had an absolute ball. All right, I think that gives me a couple to play with. I'm gonna chop that top piece off just in case I decide to do this one too. 
And to start, I think I'm going to bring over my Sizzix paper. So I'm playing with, I'm playing with the botanical colors today. This is Sizzix cardstock, and this is, these are their botanical colors. They have several different collections of cardstock, botanicals, and muted, and festive, and mystical and everyday. And the nice thing about their cardstock is no matter what pack you buy, the colors don't duplicate. So every single pack has a different set of colors. So if you were to buy the muted or the eclectic, they're not gonna be the same colors in the botanical. I like that. So then you're not doubling up. You get, um, you get, gosh, how many colors? There's 10. 10 colors and there's six sheets of each color. So 60 sheets in total. And I really do love this color palette. It's so pretty and I thought it went so well with what we were working with today. They also have in the botanical line, they have this pad of paper, which is a combination of printed paper and paper with a foil accent to it. You've got 60 sheets of this as well. Do they tell me you get, they don't tell me how many of each, how many of each style. So you've got just cute little dots and then the reverse and white on uh, green on white and then white on green. So easy peasy to use, but then see there's a foil page and on the back, it's just a simple page. Love the, there's a foil page. Ooh, that's pretty. Wow. So it's a great little pack because it gives you a little bit of everything without saying anything. None of the designs are too in your face at all, yet they all are just beautiful and they all are double-sided. Ooh. <laughs> So using the two packs together, it's a really nice combination. I think I'm going to start with this one, and I I like the grays. I think I'm going to pull a gray for that one. Do I want to do a gray foil? Do I want to do a gray? Hmm. Maybe we do the gray foil. Well, let's try it. It's the worst that can happen. We don't like it. And I think I want, maybe that. And let's see what we can do here. So uh, just a simple card topper. Maybe I grab a piece of cardstock here. Okay, I love that. And I go there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I go there. This is all about just matting a topper. there to there and I guess we can tape that on down you would do a better job of taping than I would but I do want to get it down oh I cut to well, Stacy Park not Stacy Lynn Park I reserve that for my husband <laughs> that used to be reserved for my parents now Mr. SMS I know when he says Stacy Lynn, I know I've <laughs> I've stepped in it a little bit, but <laughs> used to be reserved for my parents. Then I think I'm gonna mat it on here. Now do we like that side or do we like that side? I think I like that side, and that's the where we're gonna go. I'm gonna just straighten this out just a hair bit. So this is just about cutting. So if you're new to crafting and you want to make some easy, pretty things, 
You want to start simple. I feel you. All I'm doing is cutting rectangles. So all I'm doing is cutting rectangles. Now again, you would do a better job of taping down than I am. Hmm. I wonder if I've got some Sizzix card bases here that I can use too. Let's see. Let me pull some Sizzix card bases out. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's see if that will work. Put that on there. And then trim it out. Now you may cut first and tape later. Up to you. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. And just go for it. Is it always 100%? Heavens no. But am I 100%? Heavens no. That's where we are. And then maybe, ooh, instead of that one, what about that rose? Where's that rose? Ooh. Okay, I found a different colored card base I like better. Now let's take that gray. And I'm gonna cut me a nice big piece of this. I'm gonna take that card base and I'm gonna kinda cut it almost to the size of the card base. This is a Sizzix card base. I just love their card bases and envelopes. And this color is, well, this color is rose. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so let's trim it on down. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller than my rose card base so it acts as a mat. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. You take off a little bit more off the bottom. A little bit more off the bottom, just a hair. looks good yeah and I've got that beautiful foil going on quite a few sheets of the paper and the paper pad have that foil accent to them and everything everything oh yeah all I did was cut rectangles <laughs> talk about easy peasy and you get nine per sheet on that one. You could get the Sizzix paper and a couple sheets of these and you could be making cards for, oh, I suppose I should tape that down, Stacy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you could be making cards for days. A couple sheets of a couple sheets of the toppers from Marianne. Like I said, I think they're $1.60 and then they're on sale. So are they 20% they, uh, off maybe? I don't know. So $1.30? Grab some of your cardstock. You may already own the Sizzix Botanical cardstock and the paper pad. It goes so well. Now let's make sure that I do the card properly and I open it properly. Okay, so now let's mat it. There's the sirens. We always have sirens because we're on a main street. I was talking to somebody today on the phone who watches me with her son. There the sirens are. 
<laughs> she was so nice. Lovely lady, very, very kind. And then I suppose I could take, do I have the matching? Let's find the envelope. Coordinating envelope. Well, why wouldn't we? It fits exact. Maybe down at the bottom? Why wouldn't we? Ta-da! <laughs> I think this one's too thick. These car toppers are just easy to use. They make you look amazing. You can absolutely jazz it up if you want to add some bling or some pearls or whatever makes your heart happy but if you want to just keep them simple that's that's a-okay too envelope card so let's say you have to give a gift to somebody you take a sheet of that paper, make them nine cards, do the sentiments for them, hand it to them, and they, they can send them to their friends. Love how simple they are. Let's see, um, what other one do I wanna use? Let's pull some paper and let's see what other one I wanna use. So, <laughs> ooh, that looks good. I have some yellow in here. I know there's yellow in here. Hmm. Hmm, that's cute too. So let's see about this one. And let's look at the paper here and see what we've got. No, that was the gray. I don't want to do the gray. Ooh. That's very striking. Hmm. Do I pull that? What do you guys think? Decisions, decisions. Hmm. No guts, no glory. And now that I'm looking at it, I think I might just use that green. Let me back that there. I don't know, what do we think? Meh? Too much, too much, maybe too much. Oh, that looks good, but not with that color there. So it's just a matter of playing and mixing and matching and finding what's gonna work best for you. Like that. I like that. <laughs> so I could probably sit here all day and just play with paper. Just to see what's going to work best. Let's go with this. Change it up a little bit. And let's tape it on down. We can square it up. And away we go. So there's nothing planned here in the classes. The product is sitting in front of me. And I just go and we get what we get and you never know what we're gonna get until we get it. Sometimes it looks great and sometimes, eh, well, maybe I chose wrong. But I, I'm not per, you know, I'm not perfect, I'm just like you. And sometimes you choose wrong and you think, oh, I don't like that at all. But you always have to finish. 
You always have to finish because you may look at it and go, yeah, that's not working for me until you take it all the way to the end. Now, I may look at that and go, mm, I don't think I like it, but I'm going to let it be. I'm going to finish it all the way to the end. So I like that. And... And then I think I'm going to go here. We have to give it a chance to fully develop. We make such quick decisions about our crafting, whether we like it or not, without giving it the opportunity to become what it needs to be. You may look at that and say, that's too pale, Stacy. It could be, I don't know. We're gonna wait and see what we get. Well, that was a terrible cut. That's better, okay, we're getting there. And then let's grab a card base. Let's see what colors do I have in here. Hmm. Oh, I almost like it just like that. Look at how pretty is that. Do I want to back it with one more? Definitely not that, too much of the same. Definitely need something to contrast. Not feeling the gray either. Are you feeling the gray? No, me neither. Not feeling that one either, or that one. Okay, let's bring it back over and see what else we, oh, maybe I just, feeling that. Oh, that's very pretty. It's all about exploration and not judging anything too quickly. Mm, that one's good too. Mm -hmm. Nope, I like the dark. <laughs> sheets. <laughs> I like the dark. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's so typical me. Paper is a challenge. I absolutely struggle with it. All right, I'm going to cut that down. Not crazy about that side with this card, but I'm not doing that side. So this is kind of like how I pick my clothes in the morning. I kind of line them all up on, they're still on the hanger. <laughs> I kind of line them all up and decide, do I like them or not? <laughs> I kind of like that. I think that's really pretty. So let's trim this guy on down. And we're just cutting rectangles. Doesn't get much easier than that. And this is, what color is this? What color cards did I pick? Um, this is fir tree. So I like the rose, I like the fir tree. I'm pretty sure I like the, 
the stone haze also is going to look good. Let's see, am I close? I'm close, but I want just a little bit more reveal of that darker card stock or the card base because that card base with that dark, deep, rich color, it anchors the card. It, it kind of draws your eye in and it, it focuses you on that center. So the contrast between the very, very light topper that I've done just about there. You're like, if you had a trimmer, you'd be done by now. I know, but what fun is that? All right, so all my scraps into the trash. Make sure that I have my card going the right way. And just like that. Done. Easy. It's all about the layering. How much layering do you want to do? You're like, one more? Well, maybe. A little bit of gray just to... Just to... Oh yeah, this was two pieces. So just a little bit of gray. And now I'm here. Completely up to you. Or I change the card base and I could be there. Ho ho! <laughs> I, I don't know which I like better. We could even go, oh, we could even go darker. Wow, that really dark goes really well here. So your decision. You decide. It doesn't have to be anything more than this. It doesn't have to be more complicated, more stressful. I do think I actually like that dark gray because it really makes you pop. It really makes you focus in. So let's tape it down and then we're going to move on. Maybe I'll grab one of the gnomes and we'll do a quick card with the gnomes. I love just how easy this can be. Oh, am I going to get it off? Am I going to get it off? Stacy tape, double sided tape, super strong. Don't have much of an opportunity to think about it. Am I going to get it off? Ugh. Okay, so let's try again. I'd give anything to be able to stand up, you guys. Then I could center it and stand right over the top of it, but bad but that's what's gonna be I'm gonna take a little off the side here all right I'm gonna let it be what it's gonna be then I'm gonna put this there let's see if I can do a better job centering this and put it on my card base and we're done BAM it took me more time to figure out what paper I wanted than anything else. And that tends to be my crafty life. Paper for me, paper for me is a challenge. I like being a little unconventional. I like pulling different colors together. Come 
one little zoop. Sound effects required. Zoop. And away we go. Now you could take a little bit of glitter glue and put it in there. You have, you have options, but I've only used rectangles. You may have oodles of scrap paper that these little toppers were just made for, where you can pull that little scrap paper out and just start matting them. And getting them down. Love. So those were easy peasy. Let's see. Do we want to do a square one? The little, little, well, let's do this guy. Just cut him right on out. So this one doesn't give you a lot of space in between. The circle at the top, it's really close. So I'm probably going to have to cut this one pretty close to on the on the line of, or on the border around it. See the red border around it? I'm gonna have to come pretty darn close to that because it was, it was printed pretty close to the circle design that was right on top of it. Now it's up to you whether you wanna leave a little border on, on the outside or if you wanna take it. You may just wanna get rid of that red border altogether and cut on the inside of the border and completely cut it off. border completely off. I know we're back to the paper again. You're like again? Yeah, we're back to the paper again. So this time I think a sheet of that. And let's see what else we've got here. If we can utilize some of the stuff I already pulled out. Maybe a sheet of That looks good. A sheet of that and a sheet of that. A sheet of that. Looks pretty on that, right? Take it and put it down. And I'm going to keep this really, really narrow, a very, very fine border, I think, just so you have a little pop of that color. I mean, narrow, narrow. Almost like it was printed with the topper. That's pretty narrow. And then No, definitely not. Well, that's kind of cute. Let's put this down before I cut. A little bit wider. I go much wider. Okay, 
So how you decide to build your mats and the width between your different mats will change the look of everything. And then Nope. Nope. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to do that one, the red. And then we'll mat it onto a card and call it done. Unconventional colors, unconventional patterns. And I'm going to keep this one super narrow again. Look at, I mean, that's hardly any border around it at all but it's just enough to make it pop. All right, and then we'll move on to stamping and die cutting. Oh, of course it's too big. <laughs> it is I went too wide <laughs> huh <laughs> well then let's fix it shall we <laughs> so I went too big with my mats I don't have a bigger card base I'm just gonna have to make it work So let's cut here. And let's cut here. Better. And I think I'm going to add, what was that color that we used? It was this one right here. Or should I grab a dark green? There. Wouldn't you know it? So just fix your mistake and call it done. I just want a little bit more of something on the side. Maybe I do bring in. Maybe I do bring that in. You're like, it's looking very Christmassy. Okay. A little something more on the side since I had to cut my top and my bottom off. I didn't throw it away. It was a make it work kind of moment. going to be all right let's see if how close I was that looks pretty good set it on down and put it on down and we're moving on that's three cards with toppers took longer to pick the paper than anything else 
The struggle is real. Some of you are not paper challenged at all. That's not me. I'm just never quite sure. There. <laughs> we didn't give up. We didn't throw in the towel because I made it too big. I definitely picked some unconventional colors. And this time I just cut squares. And of course I put it on backwards. <laughs> If you're like me, the hardest thing is going to be to pick the paper. I actually really love this one. This one's very serene. This one's very happy. You pick and choose. All right, so we played with some toppers, right? And I've got three different styles for you, and they're very inexpensive. And you're like, oh, but I'm not going to have them for March. Cover them up with some flowers. You'll be good. I loved it because of him. Loved it because of him. He made my heart so happy. I got them in the square and in the circle. So we're going to move into dies and stamps. And I'm going to play with their cute little gnome. This is Ms. Gnome, Miss Garden Gnome is, and Mr. Garden Gnome. And then, oh, what's the little one called? Lucky Gnome. So I've got three different sets for you. These are very inexpensive. They really are. They're, they're easy to use. They're open frame dies. They cut like a dream and they're cute. But I gotta tell you, let me go back. I saw them and the minute I saw them, I thought of my parents. So for those of you who have known me a long, long time, um, you know that my mom and dad lived with Michael and my my boys and I for a very long time. My mom had um, my mom actually had uh, she had psychotic depression and dementia, and my dad had Alzheimer's, and I had both of them. I always knew I'd have both of my parents at some point because my brothers and sisters, who are much older than me, walked away from us years ago. I mean, I, by the time I was eight, my brothers and sisters were out of the house, and I've never really had a relationship with them, and they just kind of. They just kind of went away. So when my parents started getting older and in failing health, they moved in with Michael and I and lived with Michael and I and my boys for many, many years, actually. Um, and I was all the way to their passing. So I'm, I'm much better now. I can talk about it now without tearing up most of the time. So my mom was diagnosed with psychotic depression and dementia, and my dad had Alzheimer's. My parents were divorced when I was 10. <laughs> They had been married for 20 years and my mom kind of grew up. My mom was always the fifth child and because I, we have, my parents had four children and my dad kind of treated her like the fifth child, like, like here, let me, let me balance your checkbook and here, let me do this and let me show you that. And you don't know this and you don't know that. And finally, and my mom couldn't even drive when they got married. Finally, my mom kind of grew up. She got a job working at the Granada Hills library on Pettit and, and she kind of, took charge of her life and my dad didn't know what to do with it. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> so they did divorce when I was 10. But by the time I was 12 years old, they were living back together again. My dad never lived more than five minutes away from me. And, and I could go to my dad's place for dinner and come home and do my homework with my mom. 
They loved each other immensely, but could not live with each other for an extended amount of time. My mom was not willing to be a child again or be treated like a child again. And my dad, well, it's hard to train, you know, to, to train old dogs to do new tricks. So they, they moved back in together when I was 12 and we moved into a, a garden home out here in Canyon Country. And it had this huge backyard, enormous backyard for a home here in Santa Clarita, huge backyard. And my mom loved to garden. She loved to garden. She had roses like you couldn't believe. I mean, she'd have her, she had her little stool that was on wheels and she had her little tools and she had her gloves and, and it was all about her garden. She would sit there and she would like, work the dirt and pull the rocks by hand out of the dirt crazy but my mom would go to places like green thumb those of you who are are have been in santa clarita canyon country new hall saugus valencia long enough you'll remember green thumb she would go to the do it center these places are gone they're not here anymore because they would always have what is it garden art <laughs> oh my mom my mom liked her garden art. <laughs> I think that's what you call it. And there was a pathway, a pathway to the front door. You had to go, this house that I lived in, that, that, that from 12 till about 18, there you, you walked up to a gate and you opened the gate and then you walked up to, it was about a, a 15 foot path to the front door. So you had to get past the front gate and then you went to the front door. And she had all of her, all of her, plants and roses and then she had this this garden art gnomes <laughs> gnomes oh my gosh <laughs> my dad couldn't stand the gnomes <laughs> <laughs> and the garden extended into the backyard where she had all of these rose bushes with gnomes around her, her rose bushes. So my dad, being the smarty pants that my dad was, I mean, he was just a little poke, poke, poke. Now you know where I get it from when I poke, poke, poke manufacturers. I am my father's daughter. No questions about it. My dad must have been out somewhere doing something where he found his own gnome. <laughs> so, so I come home from school and I, you know, I, I don't really pay attention to the gnomes. I mean, no, not at all, but I see a new one and it is dressed like a Rams football player where my father, because the internet was not a thing back then. I'm old. I'm 54 years old. There was no internet back then where you could go Google, you know, Rams football player gnome. <laughs> so I don't know where he found it, but he planted it right in the middle of my mom's garden. <laughs> My mom let that gnome live there forever. <laughs> she didn't say two words about it. She saw it. She ignored it. She didn't give him the satisfaction <laughs> of taking it out and throwing it away or saying, what's this? She let that gnome live in that garden with the rest of her pretty little gnomes and the pathway. And, and it was never spoken of. It was hilarious. So when I saw this product, these cute little gnomes, it just reminded me of my mom and dad and this, this gnome that had, that, that had blue and yellow because the Rams were here in Los Angeles, the LA Rams, and, they, and the gnome was dressed in blue and it, I don't know where he found it. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened to it. I don't. <laughs> I have no clue when so my dad eventually moved out of the house in Canyon country and he built a house in Victorville and they never remarried to anybody else and they never dated anybody else. My dad would come spend a couple days with my mom and they would get on each other's nerves and he would go home. Then my mom would go spend a couple days with my dad and they'd get on each other's nerves and then she'd come home. So I'm having a feeling that somewhere in that next 
20 years of their life because it did last like that for 20 years that 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 gnome that ram football gnome <laughs> found its way to the trash can i'm just guessing could be wrong <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to tilt on down, but that is the whole reason I'm doing this whole YouTube today was because I saw these gnomes. <laughs> Not a, she said nothing, nothing to him about it. Not a word, man. Good for her. <laughs> he thought he was just going to get her fabulous response. All right. I'm going to tilt on down and we're going to get started for today. My parents, my parents were everything. Oh, see, now I'll tear up. <laughs> and, um, and we were a nice little family, an odd family. In fact, when my parents moved in with me, they, I only had one bedroom to put them in. And so they had to sleep in the same bed in the same bedroom. And they had been divorced for 40 years by then. And, <laughs> and, and God bless them. They got along so well, they, they, one forgot that they, the other just told the exact same story. <laughs> it worked out perfectly and they fell all back in love with each other. So it was all good at the end. My mom, my dad passed away two years before my mom did and my mom would go looking for my dad. And then she'd look at me and she'd say, Stacy, he's passed, right? And I, yeah, mom, he, he passed away. And then the next day she'd be looking around, where, where where's dad? And then she, oh, he passed away. So I think they're in heaven looking down. And maybe, maybe dad has a gnome in heaven. <laughs> All right, down we go. Sorry, don't mean to take your time with that. But you know what? If you're going to know me, you're going to know me. <laughs> down we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was like the most brilliant response ever. No response. <laughs> she had so much garden art. Oh, okay. So I've got gnomes for you and we're going to color them. We are, we're going to stamp with them. They are sticking together. We're going to stamp with them and we're going to color them. I'm going to start with her because she's just absolutely darling. I want you to see the size of them. Here's my finger. Here she is. These are not big. Maybe she's, maybe she's two inches. Maybe love the flower and then we have the coordinating die so you can die cut everything out her see my mom had her little water can so i'm going to play with her today i'm going to take her off and we are going to stamp we're going to stamp first so let's bring over my block and i don't need a big one that's for sure so I've got my Couture Creations blocks. I am completely sold out of them. They come in from Australia. I'm talking to Ozzy Andrew to see if we can get some more in. This is a great set. If you can find it, you get five blocks for one low price and a little storage unit for it. So wish me luck. I'm talking to Ozzy Andrew. Okay, so let's peel her off and put her down. So this is a clear stamp. It clings onto a block off. There's no sticky on the back of it. It holds by, by kind of static. And if it for any reason stops clinging, then you need to wash your block and wash your stamp and let it dry and then it will start clinging again. There's oils on your hands, there's embossing powders, glitters, whatever that you get on it that may stop it from, from clinging. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab some white paper, and we're going to stamp quite a bit. Okay. I've got my gush pad. Working on getting gush pads back. Can't tell you when or if, but I'm trying. There, that's for sure. I'm trying. So I don't need those, and I think I'm gonna do those. I'm gonna bring over, I've got my waterproof ink. This is from Jacquard. These are shipping now, so if you've got an order in from them, we're beginning to ship these now. Yay, all the product is here. I'm gonna ink it up. And the beautiful thing about the ink is that it is a really nice black, and it doesn't move with any kind of water or alcohol. So you can use your you can use your 
Copic markers or your Tor Creations alcohol ink markers or your Sizzix alcohol ink markers. One, oh, she came out good on the first go round. Look at that. Usually the first stamp, it's kind of meh, but she came out really nice. It's kind of like the first pancake you do. First pancake never comes out good. You gotta like get the pan ready for it or something. The second is better. The third, you're on a roll and you're good to go. I've never had my first pancake ever come out good when I'm cooking. Okay, so one, two, and I don't know if we'll do, yeah, maybe we'll do three. Okay, and I'm gonna do maybe the flower too. It's super cute. So the girls have made plenty of samples with these. I'm not gonna actually make anything with them, but I do wanna show you how to use them. Flower's a little bit bigger than two inches, maybe two and a half. And the flowers fit into, they fit into one of the frames. So let's see. One. I'm just on white cardstock. This is white simply defined, it's 80 pound. Two. All right, I think I'm okay with that. And we're gonna color. So today I'm just gonna use my inexpensive dual tip water-based, dye-based markers. These are from Violet Studios, which is a crafter's companion company. They're very inexpensive. They retail, you get 30 markers, they retail for $19.99 and then we put them on sale. So great colors, great ink inside them. They do what you need them to do. And I think the one thing that I like most about them is that they are, not only are they dual tip like a Tombow, but the tip of them, you get the brush tip like you would be expecting. But on the second side, you get a very, very fine brush tip. Most of the time you get on the second side, you get a bullet tip, but not here, you get a second brush tip. And it's super fine. So you've got two sides with brush tips on them, and that is unusual. They're definitely a water-based, they're not an alcohol-based ink. They're a water-based ink, and you can use them just as a marker, or we can palette paint with them. So just as a marker, hmm, just as a marker, I suppose I could go in and just straight color. So if you wanted to stamp these ahead of time and then let your youth group or your women's auxiliary group or your Girl Scout group go in and just color, they're just using markers. And you can use anybody's markers. You don't have to use these. What markers do you have? If you don't have markers, then this is a nice little set that gives you a great amount of color. It has, see I'm using the smaller, the smaller side right now to color. And I can go in and just add my color. Pretty simple. Nothing too rocket science here.
it is not an alcohol marker so it does not bleed through and uh, do we want to make her overalls red too so we'll just make her overalls red and keep her very simple. I'm not trying to blend color. I'm just trying to get some color on. And she is small, so that extra detail of having the fine brush tip on one side is very helpful. Okay, so I've covered her, I've done her hat and her overalls. Super easy. Let's grab, let's grab another color. Do we like this yellow? Oh, I do. So maybe I do the little flowers in yellow. And I'm not being exact. I'm just getting in there. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to go in there and um, and color each line. Make sure you can see. I'm literally just going in there and kind of going around the red. And any place I see white, I'm just filling it on in. Okay, so now I've got my red hat, my yellow flowers. Let's see, what color blue is this? Oh, cute. I'm gonna do her little pocket in the blue and her little patch down here in the blue and her little pockets over here in the blue and her little hat in the blue. And I'm just coloring. No blending, no highlight, no mid-tone. I'm just coloring. And maybe we'll do her shirt in that yellow. And again, it's having that, that nib that's, I'm gonna go down a little bit further. There, yes. Okay, it's having the that very fine nib that makes it helpful. Could you do these with the Sizzix alcohol ink? They've got that nice nib? Absolutely you could. You're just coloring. I'm not trying to blend anything. And that blue. So we'll do the little here. Oh, too big. I don't want to use that really big one. I want to use that super fine nib. Just come in here and zoop. And zoop. And down here. And she's just taking shape. She's just taking shape. Let's do her hair. Hmm. Let's see what color is this. What color is this? That'll do for hair. Got some little bows. So I got a bow here and a bow there. Bow here. And then her little hands. Maybe her little feet in the red. And 
her little nose. Too big. All right, she's good. Done and dusted. And again, she's small. So if you just want a color, it can be that easy and that simple. But what if we wanted to take it to the next step? What if we did want a palette paint? What is palette painting? For those of you who have never seen palette painting before, it's taking a marker that is dye-based, water-based, and instead of putting it here, in fact, let me grab a piece of paper. Instead of putting it here and moving it with water, we're gonna put it on a craft mat or on a block of some kind, whether we use the block that we were stamping with. Anything that's non-porous can act as a palette. It doesn't have to be a craft mat. It can be a Sizzix cup pad. It's whatever, whatever acts as a palette for you. In fact, if you took a cup pad and just put a piece of white paper behind it or anything transparent and put a piece of paper behind it, you'd be able to see clearly a little easier where your color actually is as opposed to on the craft mat. So palette painting is simple, easy, effective. But what I wanted to let you know is that you can't blend these colors on paper. So if I were to take my yellow and then I was to take my red, I can't add water Put a little bit of water over here. I can't add water to a paintbrush and then think I'm going to go in and blend them. That's not going to happen. It's not going to work. They're not meant to be used that way. I'm never going to be able to get that yellow to not have that, that streak of yellow. And I'm never gonna be able to have that red, not have that streak of red. That's not how these work. You can either color with them, like I did right here, and she's darling, or you can palette paint with them. Clean this off. And to palette paint, like I said, you have options. You can either put your color right straight down. Oh, there's kids outside playing. They're loud. You can put it right straight down on your craft mat. For darker colors, it's not so difficult to see. Can you see that one, that red? Darker colors, it's not so difficult to see. There's red right here. But lighter colors can be a bit of a challenge. So now I've got yellow right here. Now because this is a non-porous surface, this ink isn't going to dry. It's going to kind of stay there and, and I can get it wet. And by getting it wet, I can then palette paint. So if I put a little bit of water over here, a little bit of water right here, I don't wanna put the water directly into my color. I wanna have a little bit of water over here that I can then move into my color. And the more water you use, the more diluted your color becomes. So I've got a lot of water going on right there. A lot of water mixed in with that red. And that means my color is going to be very diluted, very light red. But if I add a little bit more red and a little less water, now my color is a little more saturated. And if I add a little more red and a little less water, 
my color is going to become even more saturated. And it's all the same tone. It's all the same marker. So you're going to get tone on tone on tone. Which means they're going to look beautiful together because it's the same color. It's just been, it's been thinned out. The saturation has been thinned out so that it's very faint into a very, very dark color. And it's all about how much water you use. I've got a lot of water in there. Now I'm back to a very soft color. Or if I take the marker straight, that's the true color. I can't make it any color but this color if I go straight to the paper. The only way to get that watercolory look is to add water to it. And it's all about how much water you use. And there's no right and there's no wrong. And you can always start out light and then intensify, intensify the color. Let me bring this one back. So let's take a like a blue. So I've got a deep dark blue. And this time, why don't we do it here? And let's see if it's easier for you to see. So I've got my color right there. I can put a little water right over here. And then depending on how much water I mix with my blue will determine the color of paint or ink that I have. The more water the lighter the color will be. The less water, the darker the color will be. totally up to me but with one color with one pen I can make saturations and I can make tones and I can make highlights and I can make shadows and I can make midtones and these pens are relatively inexpensive they really are Tombow makes a great pen and you can do these with your Tombow markers no questions it's just a matter of how much do you want to spend to be able to do this technique if you can get away with pens that are a third the price of Tombow, that may be more budget friendly for you. It's all about how much water, how much water you add. That's going to make the difference into what you do. Now I've just got a ton on here. <laughs> and then just pick it up and make a background out of it. That's the leftover. Maybe we save that and do something with that. And then I wipe it on down. So if you don't want to use your craft mat, or if you have trouble seeing the color on your craft mat, certainly any clear block or a Sizzix cutting pad with a white piece of paper behind it. And that doesn't mean you can't clean it off and then use it with your Sizzix machine. Absolutely you can, why not? So I'm gonna take her and we're gonna color her. I'm gonna use that, nope, wrong direction, Stacy. I'm gonna use my little, in fact, I might even go a little bit smaller than that just so it's a little bit Think? Do you think that's too small? So these are the mats from the, the multi-size that Sizzix has out now. You get, a, you get a cutting plate in a six by six, you get a cutting plate in like a two by six, and then you get a full-size cutting plate. 
So it's sold like this, where you get the full size, the six by six. You may want to get, this as your block set. My gosh, if you had this as your block set, you could use this as well because the stamps are going to cling right to it just like any other block. Ta-da! <laughs> it can be your block set and your palette set. Ta-da! <laughs> Why not? So now, um, if you are going to use them as a as cutting pads, I recommend that you get two sets because you only get one of this size, one of this size, and one of that size. And you'll see me. I'm going to use two of these a little bit later on. But let's just use this as my as my palette. And let's go in and let's do the same colors again, if I can remember what I did. So I used the red. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a little bit of my red. So you can see that, right? That's easier than there, here versus there. And I can either put my water on my craft mat or I can put it on my, on my block. And then I want to go in and I want to use a little bit of color. Now you're going to see me do this a lot. That is me taking color off of my, off of my paintbrush. At some point, I'm going to want my paintbrush to be almost dry. So I want to take color and water. I don't want too much water. So I might start painting her in and I'm going to start, see it's a little watery, so I'm going to take a little bit off. I'm going to start with a light pink. And I'm just going to go in and pick up a little more color and go in and make a light pink. I don't want it too watery. Okay, so there is my start. Now I can start building on that color by using less and less water mixed in with the red. So now I have a little less water mixed in with it. A little bit of water. And I can come in, oh yeah, definitely a darker shade, and start adding some shadow. So I'm gonna go over the whole thing a little bit with this slightly darker shade. It's always easier to darken a color up than it is to lighten a color up. So now I've got a little bit darker, still single tone. There's no highlight or shadow or shading in there. A little bit darker with my red now. And this is where my deep dark color is going to start to come through where I'm not putting it over the whole hat. I'm trying to make her look like she's got a little bit of a shadow and some shading. and I'm pulling it off, that water off, so it's almost like a dry brush towards the end. So I can just feather that color in. Go a little bit more, and like almost zero water. And I'm pulling it in from down in that corner. And now you can see that I've got some depth going on down here and it's definitely lighter up here. In fact, I could have kept her almost white over here. 
kept it really light, but you can see the difference between straight coloring and palette painting. Let's do her one more time. And let me see if I can keep my color even more uh, diverse and separated from a highlight to a mid-tone to a, a shadow. See if I can get it really diluted. Get a really light pink going on. Almost so that you don't see the pink. I mean, it's super light. It's a whisper of a color. That's pretty whispery, right? Now let's go back in and we'll add a little bit of a mid-tone. So water, but a little bit less water. A little more red. And I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it kind of straight up and down. You add a little bit more red. So now I've kept, I haven't gone over here on this side at all of her hat. I'm trying to keep that as my highlight. So I don't want to go over it because I don't want it to darken up. And now I'm going to pull all that water off and kind of just brush it in. So you can see how light it is over here versus how dark it is over there. Now let's go in and add some shadow. And I want to get this as dark as I can get it. The darker my shadow is, the lighter my highlight looks. It's a yin, a yin and a yang. They feed off of each other. The darker my shadow, the lighter my light. And I want to pull all that water out and I just want to kind of smooth it together. Now you can really see the from the shadow all the way over to the highlight. This one's a little more subtle and this one's a straight coloring. Can you see what you can achieve with just some markers and some water? Now let's go in. I'm not going to I'm not going to try and do her her flowers that way. I'm just going to go in and put her flowers in. They're too small to try and get a highlight and a mid-tone and a, so I'm just gonna go in and put her flowers in and I'm not even trying to stay in the lines, I'm just trying to get them in. Get some yellow going on. So now I've got her hat where it was completely colored in straight color, kind of a halfway with not so much of a highlight, but definitely your dark tones blending out and then much more of a highlight. 
Okay, easy peasy. Now let's go in and we did that light blue. Was this the right blue that we did? Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. I can just wipe this right off and get the red right off of it because all it is is plastic. I think I'm gonna go in with a, maybe a little narrower brush. Get my blue on there. Can you see my blue on there versus my blue on my craft mat? A little bit harder to see, but take an inexpensive Sizzix block, inexpensive Sizzix cut pad, and away you go. Now, I'm not going to need much to do this because this color is light, light, light already. In fact, maybe I even take a little bit of a darker blue and I blend them. Oh, <gasps> you did what? I took two colors and I blended them. So let's see what I get. I want to keep it light. Well, that's pretty light. Let's do my other one. I'm going to do her even lighter. Okay, so I've got a base color down on both of them. Now I can come in and start adding some definition. So maybe I take that darker blue and mix it with my lighter blue, a little bit more water. Pull that extra water off. And go in and start adding that color. Pull that water off and blend it in. Let's go add a little bit of that darker blue back in and a little bit of that lighter blue. Blend them into each other and make a color. and just paint it right on in and pull that color off. Every time I go in, I pull a little bit more of that color off just so then I can move it around a little bit and have it blend in. I can really see the difference. And not that they're perfect, or this is how you would shade and shadow them, but to be able to see the difference between a straight color, kind of a medium blend, versus a stark comparison, contrast and compare between the, the highlight and the shadow. It's easy to do. It just takes water. Let's do, let's play with the, let's play with the, the flower a little bit. So what if I was going to take maybe a pretty, let's see what these two colors look like. Got a pink. I 
and I'm just going to do my whole flower in pink. I can cross over the lines and my ink doesn't smear because it's a waterproof ink. If you have an India ink from Hero Arts, you're going to be fine with that. So I just went all over my lines. My only goal was to not go outside the perimeter. Maybe I do this one, super light pink. Gosh, that's a hint of a color. So just by adding more water, look at the two different pinks that I made using the same marker. Now let's come in maybe with my purple. I don't know if this is going to be purple enough. That might be too close. Let's try this one. And I'm just going around. The inside of my flower. And then I could come back, pick up my dark purple again and this time stay really close to that center. Really close. Could you use watercolor paper? Of course you can. But I like to use what I think most of you have in your crafty stash. Now let's get back into that pink. Super light pink, super, 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 super light. This is so easy to do. So easy to do. Now, what if I just used pink on this flower over here? Should I do that or should I use colors? Um, let's use a darker pink. So I'm just going to use the same color pink, only less, less water. Just less water. And as I pull off, as I pull off some of the water, a little more water. And it's like your water coloring. Well, you're watercoloring.
Do I dare try some yellow in that center? I don't know. Oh, yellow. <laughs> you guys can't see it. Yellow. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I put some yellow in that center. Not the center center. We are either going to love it or we're going to say nope. So I put some yellow in the center. Ooh. And then I can do yellow, yellow. It's simple to do. It doesn't take any skill or any talent. You sit there and you stamp yourself a bunch of little just stamp a bunch of images and then go get your go get your TV tray sit in front of the TV and play with zero expectation of anything no expectation at all just give yourself the opportunity to get the feel of how this is done and how simple it can be it makes you look like a rock star. It does. I think I might just put a little more pink. Okay, step away from the flower, Stacy. stems so this one was done with a little bit of water this one I'll do straight from the pen So you decide, same color. This one was straight from the pen. It's a little bit darker. This one was done with water. It's a little bit lighter. You choose. I could go back in now that I've got water on there and I could add maybe just a little bit down here if I wanted. A little bit down here. Just to add a little maybe shadow if I wanted to. But they are easy to use. And then when you've got them all done and you love, love, love them, you die cut them. So let's bring over, oh, I made a mess. Let's bring over the dies. So I've got my little, my little girl gnome and let's just cut this girl, this one out. And we'll cut this one out. Apparently I got my fingers in it. And we'll cut this one out. And then we'll do the, we'll do the flowers. So let me go on back because I'm gonna need to bring my Sizzix Big Shot machine over. So for those of you who have trouble seeing color on a craft mat, this is a simple way to make it happen and dual purpose <laughs> for sure. Let's bring my Big Shot machine on over. Now I am going to use, I could use my magnetic platform, I could, 
I'm going to use just the base plate and the solo shim that comes with your machine. These are the plates that come with your Big Shot machine. I've got my cute little die and I am going to use I am going to use these two plates. So to get these two plates along with the 6x6 six six plates, which I use a lot. If you want to keep the warpage down on your cutting plates, use plates that are closer to the size of your die. If I was to take her and put her on this cutting pad right in here. Now this one's been cut into. This is this is how they come when they're brand new. This is what they look like when they're loved. If I was to take her and put her on the big cutting pad and send her on through, there's no structure here or structure here to keep the plates because I have to I have to sandwich them to keep the plates from warping. If there was metal, a bigger piece of metal, a bigger die, the, the plates would have more structure and they would hold their shape better. But when you're talking about something so small and it's going underneath a roller and the roller's gonna go zoop, say it together, zoop, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna hit that roller and the plate is gonna start to want to warp because there's nothing there to keep it from bending. So, because I've used such a small little die. So if you can use plates that are closer to the size of the dies that you're using, you will cut your warpage down by a lot. So six by six plates, the six by six plates, again, you only get one in the package. But I am using my six by six plates more than I use anything else because my warpage is almost nothing. My, almost all of my dies fit a six by six plate. An A2 die, an A6 die, they all fit a six by six plate. If I'm doing a five by seven die, well, this is perfect because I need that space to keep this from warping. At the same token, if I'm doing a little tiny die, maybe I just wanna use my little tiny plates. These have not been cut into. <laughs> this is gonna be a first. And I'm not gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna, worry about um, a magnetic platform on these. We'll see how close I get. A magnetic platform is gonna keep them perfectly in line. I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants. Put my second plate on top of it. I could take washi tape and hold them down. I'm just gonna go and send it on through. And because the plate is small, the warpage is less. And there she is. And let's take her and now you can see I've got a lovely, well, I hope a lovely, can you see that? There's a lovely a little imprint of her right there because now I've cut into the plate. So let's do it again. And my paper and my die and my top plate. I always want one that I try never to cut into. And I just moved her and send it on through. See if I lined her back up. And it's an open frame die, so there's no back and forth, rotate, precision base plate, any of that needed. And there she is. Now, if you want to use a magnetic platform, it does not come with your machine. It is a separate purchase. And the benefit of it is that when you put your paper down and you put your die down and you line her on up, She doesn't move because my platform is magnetized and I'm using metal and it's holding it in place. 
separate purchase for people who do a lot of die cutting and, and stampin' dies, it's, it's kind of an important thing. If you're doing just little things like this, I don't know that you're gonna wanna spend, I wanna say it's close to, it's 40, 40 plus dollars. So you have to make that decision for yourself. And bam, there she is. So how do you want to color? Do you wanna do just straight coloring with the markers? Do you want to do a little bit of shading and shadowing? Do you want to do a lot of shading and shadowing? Let's take her off and let's grab Let's grab my flowers. And let's cut got my flour, my plate, my die, line it up, send it through. and I'm using the smallest plates. So will these dies go through a sidekick? Oh yeah, <laughs> no problem. Look at how cute, right? They're just darling. And then let's bring it over and this time we'll not use the magnetic plate because maybe maybe you don't want the magnetic plate you could take a piece of washi tape and tape it down oh I need my bottom plate lining it up without my bottom plate you could take a piece of washi tape and tape it down. You could take a post-it note and hold it down. You definitely have options. Or you can just fly by the seat of your pants and hope it works. They're just adorable. And they're so cute together. The scale, they did the scale perfectly. And when you add them in with your cute little toppers, they're just, they're so cute. They really are. The samples the girls made are darling. But, what if you wanted to color on black paper? What if you wanted to do something on black paper? You're like, black paper, why would I wanna do that? Well, I don't know and you may decide you don't want to, but I'm going to show you anyway because you have options and options are what crafting is about. And if you already have the product, you might as well know what you can do with it. So I am going to grab the white ink. This is a pigment-based ink. This is a dye-based ink. So this is very similar to a unicorn ink. It's again from Jacquard. They bought the they bought color box. They reformulated all the inks and have come out with their own. Uh, if you have a unicorn ink, you are fine. You do not need this. The benefit of this is the price point. 
you can pretty much get the reinker and the pad for the same price as a Hero Arts Unicorn ink. And for me, that can be a game changer when I can bring you something that works just as good for less money. I have to, I have to look at it and say, does it do what it says it's going to do? And, and equally as well as the more expensive version. And this does love Hero Arts. I'm still using Hero Arts. We still sell Hero Arts, but this may find um, it's way to more of you because of that price point. So this is definitely a pigment based ink, which means it takes a little time to dry. Let's grab, let's grab Mr. Garden Gnome. I just, I had to have them. They were Mr. and Mrs. How could I not? He's got the little wheelbarrow and he's got the little birdie and he's as small as can be and just darling. So let's peel him off. Let's bring over my block. Let's put him on my block. Bring over my gush pad. Remember, I'm working to get a gush pad again, trying to get them remanufactured. Small company, scrapbooking made simple is we're teeny, teeny, tiny. We have to compete for manufacturing space with all the big companies. <laughs> so usually that means when the manufacturer doesn't have anything to manufacture for anybody else, they'll do ours. <laughs> That's kind of what it means. I'm going to ink them up. And I'm going to give them a push. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. So this is a pigment-based ink. What does that mean to you? Oh, he's almost dry. That's pretty good. Usually it would kind of smear, but look at how fast that dried. That was pretty good. I got a little bit of a smear, but not much. Yay, we love fast drying pigment based ink in white. That's a happy day. If that was a Hero Arts pigment white, it would have smeared a little bit more. Let's try again. Well, I don't want to smear them. I want to be able to use them, so. And one, two, three, A, B, C. He's a little bit more white. And A, B, C, one, two, three. Okay. So you can see he progressive there. There was my first stamp. And as I stamped, he got a little bit better in color in the white because the stamp got used. It's kind of like a good pot that you're, you know, a good copper, copper skillet that you're using. You got to season it. Well, we're kind of seasoning it by stamping again and again, and the stamped image will just get better and better. So I've got him there and he dried pretty darn quick. I suppose you could, if you want to be absolutely sure, um, take a heat gun and just give them a little heat. All right, we're going to go for it. So now that I've got him on my black paper, what am I going to do with him? Well, I want to color him, but obviously I can't do it with my markers that I've been using. These are a dye based ink, not a pigment based ink, which means if I color on black, it absorbs right in. You don't see that green. The black is, is absorbing the color in because a dye based marker, a dye based ink is meant to absorb into something non-porous. A pigment based ink is meant to sit on top of something. Well, porous, yes, seep into something porous. A pigment based ink is meant to sit on top of something. So things that are non-porous, you know, it, it will sit on top of and you can throw embossing powder and heat it, but it's meant to sit on top as opposed to absorb in. So your metallics tend to be pigment based inks. Your whites tend to be pigment based inks because if the color were to absorb in, it would just fade away. It would absolutely just fade away. Let's get, um, here, here's my red. Just fades away. As it dries, it just goes into nothingness. I need a color on black or dark colors, dark red, dark purple, dark brown, dark gray, whatever you're doing, I need it to stand out. 
but I only have markers to color. How am I gonna go in and color this if all I have is markers to color? I've only got dye-based. Alcohol-based inks aren't gonna do you any better either. They're going to absorb right into this porous paper. You're gonna get the same look. You're gonna get this kind of a look with an alcohol-based marker. So what am I gonna do? Paint pins? Nah, it's hard to find paint pins and frankly, the nibs are usually so big that they're not conducive to coloring. So let's see, what are my other options? Hmm, I have a reinker. Hello, reinker. How are you doing today? What if I took my reinker and maybe just a little bit of color, maybe a hint of color, maybe not. And I put just a little bit of a reinker down. That's a little bit. So now I've backed it with black paper so you can kind of see. I mean, that's a little bit of my reinker. And my water, maybe just a little bit of water over to the side. And I can choose to color it now or color it later. What happens if we just take a little bit of water and mix it into our reinker just to thin it and make a little bit of a paint? And let's say I want to do his hat. So I'm going to go in. And I'm not trying to make it be perfect. I'm just trying to get some white in there. And I think I'll do every other one so that I don't lose where I'm at. So there's the bottom of his hat. Now I don't want to do the one right next to it because then I'll lose the definition. I won't know where, where the lines start and stop. So I'll skip and I'll do the next one up and then I'll skip and I'll do the next one up. And I just added a little bit of water to my pigment-based reinker, and I used a little, little bit of water and a little bit of reinker. and just color it all in. Building a base for me to add color on top. So all I'm doing is building a base. A little bit of water. If it dries out on your little, your little cutting pad, your, your your makeshift palette. Just add a little bit of water. Let's do it again over here. I'm just using a very fine paintbrush and all I'm trying to do is stay within the lines of the, uh, the perimeter of the stamp. So I'm not being overly careful, like trying to get the same tone of white all the way through. I'm just building a base. A base for my color to sit on. A little bit of water. And you remember how small that little droplet was, right? That I put down of reinker. Now you may never decide to do this, but aren't you glad you know you can if you want to? 
You may want to use something with dark paper, but don't know how to color it in. You can certainly use a Lumiere ink or a fine tech, a, a, a metallic watercolor, which will sit on top. Yeah, sure you can, but maybe you don't have those. Maybe what you have are the markers from Violet Studios where you get the 30 colors for, gosh, I think like $15.99 or something like that when we put them on sale. So I've got two of them done. Still got color there. If I want to go in and make them even a little whiter, I'm just building a base. And I don't care if the color is smooth or kind of blotchy. The idea is then I can go back with a color. Now you want to make sure that these are dry. So because I added a little bit of water to them, I want to make sure they're dry. The deepest darkest red I've got. Ooh, let's see what that red is. And I can go back. A little bit of water. A little bit of water. and then I can paint over the top. There's my first layer. Now I can continue to add color. And darken it up. and I'm almost just dotting it. And just layer my color over the top. And all of a sudden, you're coloring on black paper using markers that you already own. It's using that pigment based white reinker as a base to start building color. And again, you may never want to color on black paper. You may color on your black paper with a metallic watercolor ink. But what if all you have are your markers and a reinker? 
and I am slowly going over the white lines with my with my ink. So when I'm all done, those white lines will be completely gone. So I've got a little color there. Now I need to go back. Put a little bit more. Okay, I think that's plenty. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Look at how much more I added. It's a tiny little bit. That's enough. A little bit of water. A little bit. And then just, whoop, oh, too much red. Oh, yeah, too much red. And we're gonna go for it anyway. And now I'm gonna come back in and paint my other lines. A little bit of red going on in there, but you know, we're gonna make it work. And fill in the rest of his hat, building that base of color. So what if you were doing butterflies on black or dragonflies or florals? What if you wanted to use black paper, but you just didn't know exactly how to color it? Is it the easiest thing to color? Um, no, because it's meant to absorb color in. So it's not always the easiest thing to color, but it is all about building a base. And once you've got that base of color, then you can color on top of it. And while that one is drying, I can go back in. Let's dry that off. And I can do this one in a different color. bit of water and this one can have a cute little purple hat and I'm almost more dabbing than I am painting And I'm gonna come right up to those white lines and kind of cover them just a little bit. Unless you wanna see the white lines when you're done, your call. But once you get started, it really doesn't take long to do. Now I've got one started in purples. And then a little bit of water. And pick up some of that color again. A 
Now it's got a little red and a little purple in it, but that's okay. I'm just trying to build my base. Just build my base. Make my stripes. so that I can go in and color him now. Wipe it off so that there's no water there. I don't wanna have water here. When I do my brush, it'll start diluting it before I want it to. Um, let's try. And a little bit of water. Take most of that water off my brush and go in and paint. Can I go in and take my marker to it directly? Yeah. I'm going to get a base of color down. And then if I want, I can absolutely take my marker and go in directly. And because they've got such that fine tip, I might just want to, oh, I got blue in there, Stacy. Well, I'm going to make them all red. I did not clean my brush. And take my color straight to it and really darken it up. Is this a perfect world scenario for black paper? No, probably not. But is it a way to get a job done with limited amount of tools when you want to make a stunning something or other on black? Yeah, actually it is. And I'm just kind of dabbing it in. And making my color. What about his? What about his? Um, let's clean this off. And what about his little beard? A little bit of ink pigment-based because it needs to sit on top. I'm going to get a different brush because I want it to be white, white, <laughs> not blue, white, pink, white, a little bit of water. And I'm going to do his beard first. And I'm not going to be exact where the exact points are coming down on his beard. If I go a little bit outside, if I go, it's all good. I 
I'm not gonna do his mustache yet. Just gonna do his beard. And I'm just painting with that reinker. Leaving his mustache alone. Because I don't want to lose its placement. Okay, he's got a nice white beard going on. Right? Now I can heat that real quick for time's sake. And then I can come back in and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in between his beard and his mustache. Just a little bit of space. A little bit of water. Do I got a little bit of water? I got a little bit of water. just so I know where one stops and one starts. Of course you can draw it in, which is ultimately what we're gonna do. So now I've got his beard and his mustache, but kind of hard to see. Take my black marker. Or a dark gray marker. And just kind of go back in and drop back in poof this is easy to do black marker goes a long way you've got this it's just about playing and about giving yourself the opportunity to use product you already own inexpensive I mean this is $4.99 and when we have it on sale which will be now is $3.99 and the markers will be like $15.99 and and we've done so much with them <laughs> this can be this can be a pricey hobby it can there's no question about it it can be a pricey hobby but it also can be a hobby where even on a limited budget, you get the opportunity to create. You get the opportunity to play. And knowing, knowing how far you can take some of your products, what color do we wanna put in that? Well, I just did blue, so should we just keep with the blue since I'm on the blue? Um, Everybody should have the opportunity to play and create. And now you know you can use this product on light colored papers and on dark colored paper. Think about all the stamps you have that now maybe would look totally different if you did it on a dark colored paper.
All right, you guys, I can't finish him because it's getting late. But I did want you to see what can be done. Whether you're going on white paper and you're literally coloring straight from the color or you decide to blend a little bit on white paper and on black paper. You need that white ink to build that base on black paper. And on white paper, you need an ink that isn't going to schmear. And if you're just starting out and you're just playing, the, the Violet Studios markers are more than enough. It's 30 colors. It's more than enough to get you started. They're a great marker. They're inexpensive. Inexpensive just means that. Inexpensive. The quality is great. And look at what I was able to do with them. I lost one of my gnome girls. Wherever she went. Ollie, Ollie, Oxen, free, free, free. Come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. So when we started, we started with something so, oh, there she is. There she is. <laughs> we started with something so simple and so easy that took me so long because paper is a thing for me. But the toppers, the toppers are so simple. And I didn't use the dies that go with this collection. There are additional dies that go with the gnomes. And you will see them in the samples. This is beautiful. You will see them in the samples. There is also hunky dory paper that we used in the samples. My collection of hunky dory paper is extremely limited. I have five different packs for you. I didn't use them in the YouTube at all because some of them we have literally less than 30 of. This is a butterfly and floral. They're pre die cut. They come in amazing colors. The butterflies, the flowers, literally we have maybe 30 of these. And all you have to do is punch them out and put them down, layer them, color them with an alcohol ink marker and you're good to go. I have the, the Swiss Dotty paper. Again, hunky dory, you can see the dots on it. Beautiful colors. Again, maybe I have 30 packs of it, maybe. Not because I want to, I can only buy what they have. Then we have the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is beautiful. I have more of this. This is the butterfly paper. This is stunning. I mean, it's gorgeous. And this is all hunky-dory. This is a winner, winner chicken dinner, and you will see samples were made using this paper. Then we have, uh, what are they calling this? The mirror, mirror texture section. So it's got, it's all in silver, but can you see the damask pattern on this one? Can you see the tufted on that? And you can ink this with your alcohol ink markers and it's beautiful, but I have very, very limited, look at that piece. Oh, that's the damask, that's beautiful. So hunky dory. And then the last one I have is the embossed mirror swirls. This is only online, not available in the store. I don't have enough and I want it to be fair for everybody. So if you're an in-store peep, by all means, order it online and do a pickup in the retail store, but it is very, very limited. Okay, so 
We did a lot today. We played with the toppers. We played with the markers and the little gnomes and we colored them a couple different ways. I actually really love him on the black. I think it's sweet. You have options. I showed you that we have, where well, you'll see the samples, all the dies to go with. We've got the markers on sale. We've got the hunky dory on sale. I've got the three toppers on sale. And these are so inexpensive and they make such beautiful things. I've got the, there's three gnomes. So there was the Mr. Garden Gnome. There was the Mrs. Garden Gnome. And then there was the Lucky Gnome. He's so cute, look at how small he is. They're darling. I have got the, we'll go ahead and we'll do the, I think these are always, I think these are in the set already in the on the YouTube yummies if you want the the combination set of cutting pads where you get the three different sizes I recommend getting two of them that way you have matching I've got the Sizzix paper that I used today holy smokes I got a lot all right I think and and of course the inks from Jacquard I think that's a winner winner chicken dinner let me show you samples Wow, I made a mess, <laughs> but I had fun. <laughs> so here, this is this die right here. And this is this die right here, cut out of white and then colored with the markers. There is an I want it all where we have all the dies and we have the, the gnomes. The I want it all doesn't include the little topper sheets because well, it doesn't, but the I Want It All does include all the dies and the gnome stamp and die set. So there's one. Showed you this one earlier. This is a topper set from the topper, and there's the hunky dory paper, and there's the hunky dory butterfly that just pops right out. And here you've got the topper cut out, you've got the grass die right here in front you've got mr garden gnome and his wheelbarrow put right inside they're meant to work together if you want them to here i've got the beautiful topper with the hunky dory paper uh-huh it's fabulous it really is fabulous honorary sms girl patty did a beautiful job on these. Here, look at this. I've got the frame. And then these, they're white with just a little bit of gray, came out of this set right here. Those flowers are from here. Wow. Beautiful, right? And then a couple toppers on a larger size card. And look at this topper. You've got the paper from Hunky Dory, paper from Hunky Dory, Sizzix cardstock topper, Sizzix base. Pretty. Here we've got the gnome topper, kept it very simple. And if, if um, St. Patty's Day is over, which it will be, a couple little flowers there. <laughs> and then look at her. Oh, so you've got the grass, you've got the topper. Here's the flower that I did. Here's Mrs. Garden Gnome. Here we put one of the toppers right in the frame. 
Just trimmed them out and put them right in the frame. Easy peasy done. Here we have a topper. Hunky dory paper, hunky dory dotted paper, topper right there. You've got the fly, uh, the butterfly. Here we've taken the clover that comes with the little dude. Hello, little dude. So took the clover die and the clover stamp, did them over and over again, and just cut off the stem. Cute, right? Isn't that darling? Just cut off the stem. So pretty. Did I do this one? Look at how cute is he sitting in the tall grass. And look at how elegant is this one. All done with the hunky dory paper, the hunky dory butterflies, the Marianne toppers. Super cute. The topper, Mr. Garden, the grass, the wheelbarrow. So the background is the topper. Use it. It, add, it, it gives you the foundation for your gnome. All right, you guys. Whew. <laughs> okay, let me go on back. Let me go on up. Hey, are you still with me? It's late. <laughs> It's like way past my bedtime and I still have to get this loaded before tomorrow morning. <laughs> I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I hope you found this interesting or you decided this wasn't for you at all. And that's okay. You can't, well, I don't wanna say you can't do everything cause man, I know lots of crafters who do a little bit of everything, but there's some techniques that are gonna that are gonna intrigue you more, and there's others that you're gonna be like, yeah, no, not for me. <laughs> That's okay. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us special. And what we make for others then is special. So it is me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, ScrapbookingMadeSimple.com. I'm not so sure if you'll find Marianne dies and stamps and toppers so readily available here in the US. I don't know. You certainly can see if your local independent mom and pop shop has them. I'm not certain. Sizzix paper, sure, you can find that probably at your local mom and pop shop. And the hunky dory also might be a bit of a challenge, but if you have a local store and they have something similar, buy it. If you don't have a local store, that's when you come online and shop with us or any other small independent online business. <laughs> we independents sure do appreciate all of you. So again, it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, ScrapbookingMadeSimple.com. Thank you for spending your day with me the last few hours. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday for our next Make It Monday event. And well, it's pretty good. <laughs> Can't tell you what it is yet, but it's pretty good. All right, you guys, I enjoyed being here with you. Have a great rest of your weekend, and um, I'll see you on Monday. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Bye, everybody.